What is up everybody, it's Coach Kyle. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm excited for this episode. So before we jump in, make sure you hit the subscribe button, you tap on the bell to get notifications, and let's talk about content. Guys, on this episode, we're gonna dig into content because I believe that, that in the real estate space, we, we get very narrow-minded with the content that we produce. We, we really do what's simple. We talk about houses. We, we talk about real estate, right? And, and guys, here's the, the, the honest answer. No one cares. Nobody cares. We've, we've got to expand what we're willing to talk about, and that is what we're going to get into right now. Let's talk about the first way to improve our content. The, the first way to improve our content is, is I believe, by, by solving the needs of our audience. And I know this, this sounds very generic, but, but guys, I'm telling you, the reason many of you watching this are not finding success with your content on social media is because you haven't dug deep into truly identifying your audience. It, it's amazing how often I'm talking to realtors and, and I'll ask the question, hey, who, who loves working with first time home buyers? And, and half the room raises their hand. And then my next question is, what do most first time home buyers not have enough of right now? And they all answer, money. And, and then I ask them, would it not be brilliant to create a four or six week video series where you teach potential first time home buyers how to save, how to invest, how to have money so that they can actually afford the down payment for the house that you want to sell them? And so now you're getting them in early in the process, you're nurturing them, you're loving on them, you're showcasing to them, number one, that you care, but also that you're an expert. When we talk about solving the needs of your audience, it might be as simple as asking the question, what do they need before they need you? Because if you can begin to meet those needs, you will be blown away at the attraction that people begin to have for you. And, and so you've got to do this. Guys, a, a question that, that I've really been asking myself lately is when I'm producing content, right? When, when, I'm, when I'm going live, the, the question I'm asking myself is, is any part of this video self-serving? And I found that if the answer to that question is no, I'm about to do really good content. Because here's what happens if we're not careful. We will wake up and we will go, oh shoot, it's the end of the month. Man, I, I need one more closing. I need one more person in escrow. I, 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 need, I need to show some, some more homes. And, and then now we begin to create content out of need, out of anxiety, and it's always self-serving. But when we can genuinely create content that is valuable, when, when we can create content because we know that this content serves our audience, now people can see our heart. And in my opinion, this is how we stay top of mind. And so number one, above everything else, is we've got to create content that our audience wants, period. Let's talk about number two in, in how to create better content, and, and it's this, it's very simple. Be relatable. Guys, we've gotta be relatable. I, I, I watch too many realtors all they put out there are, are the nice homes, the nice event they're at, right? Them on a vacation, them buying a new car, right? It's just, it's, it's glitz and glam constantly. And then I hear those same agents say things like, my neighbor didn't think that I'd sell their house because they thought I only did luxury, right? And so you missed a $300,000 opportunity. You missed a $275,000 opportunity because from the outside looking in, the perception you're allowing people to have of you is you only do the big ones. So you've got to ask yourself that question. Is the perception I'm allowing my audience to feel reality? And, and so one of the things that I've tried to be super intentional of is, is I still do a lot of videos from the front seat of my car because it's relatable. I do not drive a $100,000 car. I, I do not have anything fancy, right? I've got a 2013 Ford Edge. And so I want people to see me as relatable. I want them to see me as normal. So that no matter how big of a platform I get to speak on, no matter how many people I get to influence, 
they'll always see me as Kyle. That, that I'm Kyle that they went to high school with. I'm Kyle that, that they went to college with. I'm Kyle that, that they used to pastor with. I'm Kyle. I always will be. And so we've got to make sure we're being relatable. This morning I put up a post uh, that was a selfie that my daughter took on my phone. And then I just talked about like how I love finding those random photos in my camera roll because it's hilarious. And, and so that was a moment, right, to remind people that may be new to me that I'm a dad and I love being a dad. Today's my wife's birthday. And so I'm going to be posting about that, right, to, to showcase to people the love and respect and, and how much I cherish my wife, my bride, right? We've, we've got to be relatable. It is not relatable to people when all we do is push houses in front of them on a regular basis. We, we've got to do more. So we've got to be relatable. And if you have any questions about that, drop them down in the comments and, and I'm happy to engage with you guys down there and, and help you out. Are y'all ready for number three? Number three may be the most important. Maybe that's why I saved it for last. Or maybe it's accidentally last, but, but here it is. Stop introducing yourself. Stop introducing yourself. Now, I know some of you watching are gonna go, bro, you introduced yourself at the beginning of this video. The caveat to this is you've gotta know your environment. In, in the YouTube world, there's gonna be a ton of people that see my videos that have no idea who I am. So I will be introducing myself at the beginning of my YouTube videos. But I do not introduce myself on Facebook. I do not introduce myself on Instagram because those are where I have deeper relationships with people and I do not wanna cheapen what they believe we have by introducing myself. Because think about it like this. If you and I went to college together and, and we were having coffee and so you're excited to see me, it's been a long time, and, and we walk in, you go for an embrace, and I'm like, hey, how you doing, Kyle Draper? You would go, whoa, 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 wait, what? why are you introducing yourself to me? Of course I know who you are. We went to college together, right? We make people feel like that when we introduce ourselves on our videos. And another side of this too is if you are introducing yourself, especially in a personal environment, you're telling us all at the very beginning that that video is all about me. It's all about me. This is the Kyle Draper Show. It is all about me. It's not about value. It's not about helping. It is about me. So, so when you're on Facebook going live or when you're just posting a video to Facebook, do not introduce yourself. Do not do it. You'll be blown away at the increase in engagement that you get, okay? And, and, and let me give you one last example before we, we wrap this video up. Imagine if, if this weekend you want to go showcase a, a nonprofit that you serve. You go to this nonprofit and, and you start the video like this. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle Draper with Blah Blah Real Estate, and, and I'm out here at Blah Blah Nonprofit, and, and I just want you guys to see it. Who, who's that video about? That video is about you. That video is about me, right? It's about me. It's not about the nonprofit. I just made that very clear by introducing myself at the beginning. But but imagine if if I redo it this way. What is up, everybody? Good morning. I know it's early. Oh my gosh, is that an eye booger? But guys, I'm excited that you're here because this is a nonprofit that my wife and I love. We we give to this. We serve here, and, and I can't wait for you to see it. You see how different that intro was? Because that intro was truly about the nonprofit. And so we've gotta be intentional with what we want people to pay attention to. Do you want people to pay attention to your intro and that it's all about you? Or do you want people to actually catch the vision and get engaged with the content because it's all about them? So, so think about those three things when, when you're producing your content and, and watch it continue to get better. Guys, thanks for watching my, my video this week. If, if you need help, if you've got questions, there's links down in the comments for, for different resources that I provide. Uh, I'll put my email down there. Reach out to me. I'm happy to help. And, and remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Content is so valuable for you and your business that, that you've got to commit to it right now for eternity, for as long as you plan on being in business, you've got to be producing content. So do not try to reinvent the wheel. Do not put a ton of pressure on yourself. 
Take it one video at a time. And I promise you, you're gonna look up three months, six months, a year from now, and you're gonna be so proud of where you've come from, you're gonna be so proud of the content you've produced, and you're gonna have a lot of great stories that have made you money through, through allowing you to serve other people because you were intentional. I hope you'll watch the next one. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll talk to you soon. See ya.